the Florida Podcast Network, the voice of Florida. This is episode 11A of the Finding Florida Podcast on the Florida Podcast Network, Small Towns, Coast to Coast, The Preview. Welcome to Finding Florida, the podcast that takes you from country to the coast. Join your tour guides, an unlikely pair, city girl Jemmy and country boy Glenn, as they explore the amazing sights and sounds of the Sunshine State. Thank you for joining us on this lead up to our 11th adventure of the Finding Florida podcast. Hard to believe we're almost a year old. (laughs) We're going to have a birthday soon. Uh, We are going on a road trip this time from Florida's East Coast to Florida's West Coast in a journey to discover the small town finds of Florida. So all the audio from that fun adventure of driving coast to coast will be on the next episodes, 11B and 11C. And we had so much fun along the way. In fact, here are a few quick clips. Wait, wait, I need an official review. Um. <laughs> that was it right there. That's all we need. <laughs> Jean's going to take me out for a spin in my first sidecar ride, and you're going to hear it. We're on a back road in the middle of nothing. Guess what, Glenn? There's a Venom show at 3 p.m. We're just in time. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, let's go. Glenn's disappeared. I am now in the snake enclosure by myself. And I love goat cheese, so I'm assuming I'm going to love goat cheese. And he kept fudge. calling it goat, goat cheese, cheese fudge. fudge. <laughs> no, they're both made out of goat milk. In my defense, they're both made out of goat milk. That's a woman thing. It is not women, a woman it's thing. It's a woman thing. It's not a woman thing. It's a thing. woman thing. Women are more picky about parking in the shade than men ever would be. I don't like to melt. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am chocolate after all. <laughs> you, you, you're something. But on this episode, we're talking about small towns, which Florida is full of, of all kinds of varieties. And then we'll get into a whole bunch of other fun Florida stuff, including the community clipboard, critters of Florida, Florida or not, and fan favorite, Florida. Listen in. I would dot the West with little hometowns and fill the East with excitement. Right in the middle, I put a great big playground. I would surround it all with water from coast to coast to coast. And I'd give it a name, Florida. Well, we made Jemmy a little nervous on this trip a because let, let me explain. When we take these little trips together, Jemmy has every minute of every day planned from the time that we put our heads on the pillow to get up in the morning where we breakfast, where we go for everything. It's all planned all day long. And there's and a show notes like- version. There's a spreadsheet version. There's a version in my phone. Yeah. And she right. doesn't like a gap. There's no gaps allowed in the day. It's Kill no. Glenn Day. I don't so, need a gap. Gaps are boring. <laughs> so gaps are what allow us old guys to breathe. Uh, so I, I swear she even puts in the bathroom breaks uh, in, in these <laughs> spreadsheets she has. Well, this time we decided that we were going to take it a whole different direction and try something we hadn't tried before. We were going to go on a freestyle adventure, which means we were driving from one coast to the other coast, and we only planned two things, one yes. thing each day, two and things. everything else we had to find along the way. I'm trying to think very positively, Glenn, but it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> You loved it. And, uh, you know, I, you're going to find out in the next couple episodes how that all worked out and whether Jemmy re- has re- yet recovered from her hives. Uh, because, <laughs> so, so we started in uh, Melbourne, which is right, also near Indy Atlantic, which is a town I never heard of before. Uh, just, have you ever heard yeah, of Yeah, it's like the, the coastal part of offshoot of Melbourne. Yes, yeah. it's below the Space Coast, like right in the middle. Uh, long route A1A is literally where we stayed and mm. started along A1A uh, and the ocean. We went and said hi to the ocean in the we morning did. before we left. What yeah. a lovely ocean it was. Yeah, we took a nice walk. It was nice. Yeah, we did a beach yeah, we for it. Yeah, we you there. But we started with our toes in the water and then we headed out and made our way across the state. But the goal was that we had to take back roads. We couldn't take no, the major the goal- road. Of the show was to take back roads. Your goal was to give me hives, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I accomplished both. And we started in Melbourne. And we usually do a little bit of history on the places we go. And I have a little bit of history for you on a couple of the stops that we made. All right. So Melbourne is where we started, right on the coast. As I said, it's it's just south of the Space Coast. And Melbourne uh, was 
started after the Civil War. Pioneer families arrived and founded it in 1867. It was formerly called Crane Creek. Probably some guy named Crane was there. <laughs> or um, there were cranes, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> there was cranes in the creek, something. Um, and it was named Melbourne in honor of its first postmaster. Really? And his name, Cornthwaite. John Hector. Wow. Being a postmaster he, back in the day sounds like big doings. Get I know. A town named after you. Your name was Corthwaite. <laughs> Corthwaite. And he was an Englishman who spent much of his life in Melbourne, Australia, which oh. is how the name came about. Can I ask you, you know what? I ask, can I tell you? So when I was looking up Melbourne, I, I took me a second to realize, no, you have to be very specific because some of yes. the things I found. Australia. Oh, that's Australia. Exactly. I'm like, whoa, that's interesting. I never saw that. Oh, because it's Australia. <laughs> By the way, if we want to do Finding Australia sometime, I'm in. I'm in. Uh, I'm in. Okay. <laughs> Why um, do you get punched by a kangaroo? Let's do it. <laughs> the first business was opened in the late 1890s. And what do you think the first business was in Melbourne? Post office? Funeral home. <laughs> <sighs> And it's still in business. It's called the Brownlee Maxwell Funeral Home, and apparently That's it's still in business. <laughs> we probably passed. It. The, it, interesting too. Uh, the oldest black-owned business in the county is called Tucker's Cut Rate Plumbing, and it Ooh. opened in 1934. And apparently, it's still there as well. Wow! So who knew? So that's kind of. In 1919, a fire destroyed most of town <laughs> along Front Street, as most towns did back then. And the funeral home made a lot of extra lot of <laughs> Is that Sorry, too soon? Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> 100 years, too soon. And at the time, it was rebuilt along U.S. Highway 1, which is where we were. Yeah. And in late 1942, the Naval Air Station Melbourne was established as a site to train newly commissioned Navy and Marine pilots for World War II. The program ran until 1946, and the land was used uh, for that program makes up most of what is currently Orlando Melbourne International Airport down there. You know what? I'm wondering, do you know if the Navy base is still there? Because there I, is a base still there. yes. I think that may have been where I went when I got to hang out on that aircraft carrier a long time ago. I think I was in Melbourne. Well, there you go. This was back in uh, 20 years. Now, were you hanging around with the sailors for a particular reason on the ship? Yeah, I was yeah. dating one of them. Oh, there <laughs> Uh, no so further comment. <laughs> yeah, on, 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 moving on. Uh, famous residents they have come out of Melbourne are Jim Morrison, lead huh. singer of the Doors, and Kate Upton, actress and model. Kate Upton. Well, I like Kate one Upton. of those. Don't like so much the other one. I'll just let that hang out in the air. You decide. <laughs> And of course, Jim Morrison. He died like at twenty-seven or something, and he yeah, pretty. One, yeah, I think he's one of the twenty-seven gang. You know, there's yeah. that famous number of death. Right. <laughs> famous age of death. Yep. So now the interesting thing happened when we left Melbourne. Okay. And you're going to hear all the stops we found. And I talked Jemmy into going to some places. She talked me into some places and it all worked out. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we drove out of Melbourne on route 192 heading toward K Kiss Me. Kiss Kissimmee. Me. <laughs> heading toward Kiss Me. One day Can't you will get it right. <laughs> I've never got it right yet. Nine or 11 months, I've got it right. Kissimmee. So we're heading towards Kissimmee in this back road, 182. We get out outside of Melbourne, and it's nothing. Mm -hmm. It is nothing but nothing. Cows, swamps, cows, trees, swamps, cows. Various shades of green for as far as the eye can see. For literally, we drove for almost an hour. Yeah. Until we got to our next little town, which was called St. Cloud. And along the way, we discovered that we were driving through one of the largest cattle farms in the country. Mm -hmm. And it is the uh, the Church of, the, of Jesus of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, own that particular farm. Well, it's, it, it's spread over three counties, Osceola, Orange, and Brevard. Wow. It covers, get this, 300,000 acres. Jeez. This is one farm owned by the Mormons, 50 by 30 miles. In 1997, it, it was designated the world's largest beef ranch, and the land is worth an estimated $900 million. Wow. The ranch maintains 44,000 head of beef cattle. Wow. Huh. As I said, it is a for-profit ranch, so they operate it. And they have citrus on the ranch, beef cattle, and a bunch of other operations. There's 90 ranchers that, and their families that live there. Wow. So that's why you drove through a lot of nothing for a long time. <laughs> now, it's interesting, and you can take this for what you want, but if you, if you know a little bit about the Mormons, you know that they, are, they were probably the first preppers. 
They are all the Mormons oh, like have doomsday to preppers. Years. Yes, mm. they all have to have a year supply of food in their house and all of this stuff. Well, oh. this is Gordon Hinckley, former president of the church, said we have felt that good farms over a long period represent a safe investment where the assets of the church may be preserved and enhanced, while at the same time they are available as agricultural resource to feed people should there come a time of need. Well, I know whose door I'm knocking on if the zombies come calling. <laughs> yeah, well, the zombies come. Head to uh, uh, Deseret Hinkley's Ranch. house. <laughs> All right, then we headed through St. Cloud, then we were through Davenport, and we ended up on our way toward Tampa. We were on a little back road, and we ended up in Lakeland, mm-hmm. Florida, which I have friends that live in Lakeland, and uh, I've been there once before in my life. And Lakeland used to be really, really big into orange groves. There used to be a ton of orange groves in Lakeland. Did mm-hmm. you see an orange, about two orange groves the whole time we were out? We saw uh, some. It, Sadly, uh, no oranges growing on them yet. I would have jumped out the car and picked them, but we saw a few. <laughs> Do you know there's a fine for that? A thousand dollars an orange for picking oranges out of an orange grove. Okay, so next, so when I have the urge next time, I'm going to ask you to go out of the car to, <laughs> to pick yeah. one. So uh, Lakeland most expensive is a glass of orange juice ever. <laughs> So Lakeland got an interesting past, too. Uh, Native Americans began to live in that area 12,000 years ago, and then the European settlers arrived in about the 1870s. The city expanded in the 1880s with the arrival of the railroad. How many Gosh, times have we it, I'm in so, this? I'm sorry. I just, it strikes me just for a second when you say Native Americans began to live in the area 12,000 years ago. <laughs> European American settlers have been 1870. Like, it's like such a stark difference my god you think that 12,000 years ago the alligators were like 10 times the size oh, they are they could have been size of buses <laughs> they could have been. I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh so at the beginning of World War II, the and this is going to come back when you hear the next episodes, you're going to discover that Lakeland and air travel and mm-hmm. airplanes go together. Mm-hmm. At the beginning of World War II, the Lakeland School of Aeronautics, headquartered in the recently built Lakeland Municipal Airport, which we saw, became part of the nationwide network of civilian flight schools to help the war effort. And between 1940 and 1945, more than 8,000 Army cadets were trained in planes there and went off to be pilots hmm. so that's where they did the training they closed that then in, after the war was over in uh, 1945 so but it's still as we know uses the airport you're going to hear a lot more about that in oh, coming yeah. episodes. it was time. a lot of fun uh, citrus growing began back in the early settlers who started planting trees in the 1850s and uh, it became one of the major industries in in that area. See, but they can, sp- they can spare one or two. They can sp- I can jump out the car. They can spare <laughs> one or two. <laughs> uh, what, the thing that really supported the town, and, and we've heard this of a couple towns around Florida, is phosphate mining. Hmm. Uh, Wait, what is phosphate used for? I don't even know. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Uh, so ph- phosphate rock is used to make calcium phosphate nutritional supplements for animals. And pure phosphorus is used to make chemicals for use in industry. The most important use of phosphate rock is the production of phosphate fertilizers for agriculture. So all the cows need Are f- their they're getting their supplements if they eat the grass right out of the phosphate ground. It sounds like it's all cyclical somehow. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it does. And that's probably more than anybody wanted to know about phosphate. <laughs> but do you know that in that area of Lakeland, they produce 25% of the U.S. phosphate supply right there? Well, then there you go. Now, famous people, there were a lot of B, C, D people that I'd never heard of, mm-hmm. like, you know, musicians <laughs> from the 50s that played in a band. Right. But one of the most famous people that come out of there, everybody that lives in Florida, is familiar with. Well, at least they've gone to a store. Wait, and wait, that's let me guess, George. let me guess, let me guess, let me guess, let me guess. Everyone in Florida has gone, the only thing I think of is Publix, has to be Publix. Yes, George <laughs> Jenkins, founder of Public Supermarket, hey. came out of Lakeland. And it is still the largest employer in that county is Publix. Wow, Publix is so just, there it's like go. on every other corner. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Publix does kind of if own you Florida. Do, if you had to do a Publix run, it's like, do I go to this one? Do I go to that one? <laughs> Which one's the most convenient? Publix was probably really mad when Walmart and Target started bringing in groceries. Yeah, but you know what? They've held their own. Go Publix. Yeah, they have. They have the That's best true. subs ever. I love their... Sorry, shout out for the Publix subs. Go get one. It's so good. <laughs> 
Now, then we headed from Lakeland over to Gibsonton mm-hmm. and Riverview. And Gibsonton, you're going to hear a lot more about that history coming up in the episode. So, and you're going to want to hear this history. Oh, yeah. It is truly unique. Very unique. <laughs> very unique I don't place. know if there's any place I'd like it in the country, to be honest. I don't think there so, is. Yep. It's just like it. So it was an interesting history trip through across the state. And, you know, we're going to really find out in the coming episodes, too, whether Jemmy enjoyed this and we're ever doing it again or whether <laughs> she will never let Glenn have an idea again. So. And now we know why when you're driving through the state, there is so much empty. It's because the Mormons own it all. <laughs> They're not building anything. <laughs> That's right. They own that half. Holy smokes. <laughs> Favored by Freaks. Beloved by the bizarre, adored by the abnormal, a place that some of the strangest folks on earth call home. Gibsonton, Florida has been a hideaway for fire eaters and half women for about 65 years. A refuge for sideshow performers, where showbiz is business as usual, and human oddity isn't odd at all. Well, you have to tune in to episodes 11B and 11C, which will come out over the next couple of weeks to hear all about the adventures we had freestyling across Florida. And find out how I survived the freestyle concept. Or did I? We'll see. Might have been a little too much time in the car with Glenn. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see. Need a convenient and delicious dessert? Look no further. Grab a cheesecake jar from Leanne's, a local Tampa-grown company shaking up dessert. They bake a single slice of New York cheesecake right in a jar to keep it from getting cold on hot Florida days. It's genius. We both tried some for ourselves back at PodFest and truly loved it. And then they met us out in Tampa and gave us more. So we love them now even more. Thank you so much, guys. Find Leanne's on social media as Cheesecake, the letter N, more. Cheesecake and more. And look up the Central Florida location nearest you to find their yummy jars. Their website is www.leannescheesecakesandmore.com. That's L-E-A-N-N-S, cheesecakes, the letter N, more.com. Or give Joseph a call at 813-445-3861 for your treat in a jar. Well, before we get to everything else coming up in the show, is there anything else we need to catch up on? Mm, Not really. My life is kind of boring right now. (laughs) Not true. It's your birthday coming up. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. That's right. That's right. Another 29 again. Bites the dust. (laughs) You think they'll stop carding you now uh, every place we go? I I think I'll be 80 and they'll still be. (laughs) (laughs) It is literally everybody. It is ridiculous. I just have that look. But yeah, it's my birthday coming up and pomp and circumstance will ensue. But anyways, aside from all of that, just a quick reminder for you to go ahead and jump into the FPN Insiders on Facebook. It's a closed group exclusively for our super fans of the Florida Podcast Network shows, such as the Finding Florida Podcast. And uh, it'll give you access to scoops, contests, special treats. And Glenn and I definitely look forward to meeting you in there and getting to know you and finding out what you like so much about Florida. We also want to thank all of you who send us comments, whether they're on social media or website or through email. They mean a lot to us. And you can do that by sending an email to Jemmy. That's J-A-I-M-E or Glenn, G-L-E-N-N at FloridaPodcastNetwork.com. And we appreciate all the notes, ideas and feedback. Well, as you know, guess what time it is, Glenn? What time is it? (laughs) It's time for us to find out more fun stuff about the rest of the state of Florida. Yay! Florida, where you get school credit for learning to water ski. Well, yeah, as we mentioned, it's my birthday coming up. And one thing that I always think about when my birthday's rolling around the corner is... 
I'm about the exact dead center of hurricane season. <laughs> I always think about that for some reason when it's my birthday. So I want to talk about hurricanes for just a minute because they are such an impactful thing for here in Florida. But if uh, this is where you think you're going to get any kind of serious hurricane evacuation plan discussion, well, you're doing it all wrong because that is not what we do on this show. <laughs> Instead, I saw a picture of a really funny sign the other day and I had to share it. So there's a sign that's posted on a beach. I'm not, I couldn't figure out which beach it was, but it says hurricane evacuation plan. Number one, grab a beer. Number two, run like hell. (laughs) I thought that was hilarious. So it made me think like, what's your hurricane evacuation plan, Glenn? Is there anything that you have to do aside from the boring, you know, first aid kits and grabbing water and ice and all that, blah, 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 blah. Is there anything else? Well, it's a lot harder. It's a lot harder for us because we have the horses we have to move. So you're always worried about, you know, and horse people don't care about themselves. I have to do the caring about us while Jennifer cares about the horses Uh. because horse women care about getting the horses out. That's all they care about. They wouldn't care anything about themselves. (laughs) So that, so we always have to, you know, um, you know, worry about the horses and where are we going? And it's a little harder to pack up and leave and go to a hotel with your horses. Oh, it's a little tougher. They don't accept horses into hotel rooms. No, they they really don't like them in the lobby for some reason. reason. (laughs) If you remember right, it was your birthday, September the 10th when, Irma hit it was. last year. Yeah, I spent my birthday in a dark cave. In a closet. You're going you're gonna to be in a closet this year again? I don't know. <laughs> but I do know one thing I'm going to do this year that I did not do enough of last year. I certainly didn't. I learned my lesson. I need to stock up on my migraine meds before the hurricane hits because <laughs> there's something about that pressure that just brings out the migraine. And that's just no way to live in the middle of a hurricane. So you had a migraine <laughs> in the closet. On my birthday. <laughs> on your birthday. <laughs> <In the> dark. <laughs> No cake in there, was there? No, and to make sure that I at least have some sort of a happy time, I need to make sure everything is charged. So I got to charge my phones, my iPad, charge up everything, including my backup chargers, so I can have a little bit of electrical-based entertainment while I'm suffering. Well, and you and I were texting each other, and we were like, okay. And we would tell each other, I'm turning the phone off for three hours now. Right. I'll check in in three hours because we were running out of batteries. Oh, I know, and, uh, I know. I know. And then another thing I have to do, and I'm sure it's a million times worse for you because I have a studio set up. I think my, your studio setup is like mine, but on steroids. And whenever a hurricane is coming through, you have to unplug everything so nothing gets fried. Well, not and only that, like a- we had... We had moved all of the computer equipment, everything up to a different house that was more secure than ours. So we had to move everything. Well, just, so. the, just unplugging things alone and then replugging them afterwards. It's like your cords end up like that quintessential tangle of Christmas lights that you see. Yep. It's, it's like you got to deal with that. And, and then uh, it's such a headache. So, yeah. Can you believe it's been a year since Irma? No. No, I certainly can't believe you and I are still getting along. It was so impactful years. for all of us it that was. lived here. Not to get serious, but I mean, it really was. It really was. We were all affected by it. I know. In one way or another. I know. Uh, yeah. I know. I know. And I was thinking about it this year, if it if it hits, um, just please don't hit on my birthday. Please. <laughs> don't let that happen in a row. I'll, I will pass. So thank you. Wait a couple of weeks. <laughs> Wait a couple of weeks. So I'm really curious if any of you guys have anything funny or fun that you do for your hurricane preparedness, go to the FPN insiders uh facebook page and facebook group and let us know i can't wait to hear what everyone has to say and if you are leaving your house for hurricane uh preparedness please remember to take all of the chicken out of the freezer in case the power <laughs> goes out yes because when you get home your house will reek and you'll, and you'll have throw to throw up. your refrigerator away like we did so, <laughs> so lesson learned <laughs> Glenn brought us an awesome mystery sound in 10A. Let's replay it, Glenn. There we go. There you go. (laughs) And the dramatic reveal... Okay, so we went to the races up here, and you only get credit if you said those were school buses racing. (laughs) And let me tell you, yes, they were school buses and old school buses, old half-dead school buses. 
And there's nothing more fun than seeing a school bus get wrecked. For some reason, I got great satisfaction out of that because I had ridden in one for 12 years. (laughs) (laughs) So did I. I probably would have enjoyed it too, but I got beat up in one for 12 years. (laughs) (laughs) Sadly, nobody guessed that it was a school bus bus race race. rally. I can't imagine that nobody guessed that. (laughs) (laughs) All right, losers. Nobody gets credit. (laughs) (laughs) Well, here's the clip one more time now that you know the answer. Check this guy out. This is a story out of Davy, Florida, and the headline says it all. A six-foot lizard is terrorizing a Florida lizard. family, and trappers can't catch him. A six-foot-long Asian water monitor. <laughs> oh, my, oh my gosh. gosh. These are those big things that kind of look yes. like Komodo dragons. They're, yes. This one is They look massive. prehistoric. Yes, yes. Well, this one has been eluding the grasp of seasoned trappers for days. Not just like one day, days they've been trying to catch this thing, and they can't. <laughs> I feel really bad for this one family. So... Zachary and Maria Lieberman, they first spotted the scaly beast on their pool deck when it was staring at them through the sliding glass door. Just I'd never go outside ominously. again. I would never go to <laughs> my pool its again. Tongue. <laughs> this thing is massive. And uh, while they're not venomous, their mouths are riddled with bacteria. So these monitor lizards, you don't want them to bite you. And they will bite you. Oh, they will bite you. So needless to say, the whole entire family, yeah, they're scared to death to go in this pool. So go ahead and play the video, Glenn, so you can see and appreciate just what I'm talking about. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. That's that it. is, oh my God, his tail's like six feet long. It's massive. It's, oh my God, no way in hell I'd ever go outside again. <laughs> There's no way. I know. Well, He's this thing, huge. get this, it escaped from a property in the neighborhood. The owner was a 14-year-old kid. What? <laughs> who He said he originally had three of them, but they only have this one now. Now, my big question is, where are the other two? What happened to the yeah, other and, two? Yeah, this thing's bigger than the 14-year-old kid. I it's know. huge. <laughs> so for... It's almost, basically an alligator. It really is. So for almost... And we'll totally include the video in the show notes so everybody can see. Oh, so for so almost five cool. days now... Experts from Florida's Fish and Wildlife Conservation, along with local professional trappers and hunting dogs, they've been trying to catch this. Guess what? How how much they estimate this thing weighs? It's got to be three, four hundred pounds. Well, okay, it's not that crazy, but it is a hundred pounds. <laughs> it's a big, big guy. <laughs> it's huge. It is. So once they capture it, hopefully they will. Because honestly, as of the writing of this article, they. Still- <laughs> Got it. I would never go outside. I, know. I would I would be in the house. They can deliver food. Uh, I would never leave again. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was no, knocking at their back door in this video. Deliver food because then the delivery boy becomes his meal. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> but yeah, once it's caught, it'll be placed in a, a secure facility in the area, hopefully. But yeah, so right now, the Lieberman's family backyard, it's like a... I just request that 14-year-olds not own six-foot lizards. Well, the sad thing is, you know, it must have been just a few inches long when they first got it. And then it grows and grows and grows, as these things do, guys. (laughs) This is what we do in Florida. We buy things that are exotic, and we buy them very, very tiny. And when they get big, they get out. Speaking of exotic, wait until you hear the next episode. Ugh. Oh, yeah. It was great. That's all I'll say. It's great. I totally get Glenn out of his comfort zone (laughs) with some reptiles. But I just want to put in perspective for you. So you've seen this lizard. The Liebermans have two children ages two and four years old. Those are like light snacks to this thing. So I would be completely terrorized. I I don't know what I would Why? (laughs) I just don't get why. I don't know. So, yeah. So go to FindingFloridaPodcast.com so you can see the video for yourself. This beast is massive. So I have two stories for you this time, Glenn, and only one involves a bona fide Florida man. So we're going to go through them both. 
And I want you to tell me which story you think actually came out of Florida. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. So this first story involves a viral video showing a guy, <laughs> I just can't even say it without laughing, carrying an alligator <laughs> into the freezer of a local liquor store. <laughs> yes, that's right. He carried a cold-blooded, deadly animal into a freaking beer cave. <laughs> Glenn, just play the clip. Viral video shows Robbie Stratton running through a convenience store with an alligator in his hands. He takes the animal in the beer fridge as well. I don't even remember coming up here. We asked Stratton where the alligator came from. No clue. <laughs> no clue. I literally came to the store and he was in the back of the truck. They told me what I did was stupid and uh, I'll be facing some charges here soon. and Probably go to jail. Probably not. We'll see. He says he regrets his decision. <laughs> Florida. No Has recollection of that happening at all. At all. This store sells some good liquor. <laughs> and I drank a lot of it that night. <laughs> <laughs> no alcohol involved in oh, that. Oh, man. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. So They guys, sell some good liquor. <laughs> yeah, so candidate number one is a guy who dragged an alligator into a beer cave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now on to story number two. You're going to have to tell me again which of these stories comes from Florida. And this one is packed with just as much crazy as the last one, Glenn. The new story that I found posted about this, the video for it kind of cuts off in the beginning, but it'll all make sense in the end. Just go ahead and play the clip. Right now is behind bars. The other at the hospital recovering after that finger was bitten off. Now this all went down, we're told by firefighters. Around 6.30 tonight, two men got into a fight and one bit off with his teeth, the other's finger. When firefighters arrived, they found that the victim had his finger bitten off at the knuckle and the rest of his finger was on ice. Take a listen. Be advised, an update from the PD. Apparently, there's two forces that got into an altercation and there's been a finger that's been bitten off. The uh, victim's laying down. Now that victim was rushed to hospital no word on his condition tonight as for that alleged biter the 47 year old man again is behind bars no word if alcohol was involved <laughs> so wait, <laughs> no we punch, can guess wait the punchline <laughs> of this story right which they don't really say in the in the news clip i'm like oh, this happened on a golf course <laughs> okay there were two really? foursomes playing golf and they oh, got into a fight and one guy bit off the other guy's finger <laughs> Uh, let's see. That's a tough. Am I supposed to guess? Yeah. So, Glenn, who do you uh, think is the bona fide Florida man? The man with the alligator can it be both? or the man with the alligator like razor teeth? Nope. It's can it just, be both? It's just it one or both. the other. It's just one or the other. OK, I'm going to have to go just because the guy in the second clip that worked at 911 sounded like he had a Brooklyn accent or, <laughs> or Long Island accent. But we have a lot of those down here in Florida, too. Yeah, we do. um, so I'm going to go with the first guy, the alligator in the beer cave. So drunk, he didn't remember because drunken. <laughs> was he naked? Because if he was naked, he definitely would be. A <laughs> no, nobody was naked. Everyone had their clothes on. For, it's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> the story would have their clothes on. But I'm going beer cake, dude. You're right. The man with the alligator. <laughs> so it was the guy, the first story. He's our Florida man, Robbie Stratton, and his buddy, Kevin Scott Keene. They were charged with illegal possession of American alligator, illegal ex exhibition of dangerous wildlife, <laughs> and cruelty to animals, according to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. And both men could face a fine of five thousand dollars or up to five thousand dollars. That's an expensive night drinking. <laughs> it sure was. Oh my gosh. <laughs> follow up our Florida segments with a hero of the month segment just to kind of bring it all around to a positive note and make us stop crying but I don't have to with this one this one is so good so I have a feeling I already know the answer to this Glenn but are you familiar with the in my feelings challenge no I've seen some things about it but I don't know what it is okay okay I'm actually surprised you know anything at all if you've even heard of it so kudos to you for that well I know people have been getting in trouble and doing stupid things yes 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 so in this it's basically like a video meme challenge to the chorus of Drake's song in my feelings where you have to just do a certain dance to the song for the video well some people have added an extra level of difficulty to the challenge by jumping out of their moving car to do it yeah we're not always that bright um <laughs> and i have Are they seen the drivers 
Yes. <laughs> so I yeah. have seen fail video after fail video on this, guys. And How about we say uh, instead of a level of difficulty, a level of stupidity? Definitely. a lo- You're right. A st- absolutely. <laughs> this is Florida after all. And it, I, it, this is not a good idea, okay? Let's just put it out there. This is not a good idea. But So this is one example of a of a fail, just a classic fail, and I bet you can guess what happens in it. Just just play the first clip, Glenn. Kiki, do you love me? Are you riding? Say you never want to leave from beside me. I want you, and I need you. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> she was dancing on the roof of the car okay. and fell off. All right, so let me explain what happens. So there are actually two cars involved in this clip. Uh, so the driver, actually, the girl you hear at the end is uh, the passenger. She's the one recording. So the driver jumps out of his car and into the road and starts to dance. And the idea was for him to jump onto the hood of the other car. But instead, he slips on a puddle of oil and gets hit by the second car. <laughs> so Jeez. instead of him jumping on it, it kind of end up. Do you have to around. be drunk? to do this by the way is a requirement <laughs> oh, gosh no this kid was completely stone cold sober from all i can tell and we'll include a link to the video in the show notes so you can see it for yourself of course but so of course yeah head over to finding com to see it but again this is not a good idea so the rest of this segment is not my advocating that anybody do this please 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 no one do this but <laughs> guess where this kid ended up glenn a hospital no Oh. He ended up on the Jimmy Kimmel show. <laughs> of course he did. Play the next clip, Glenn. So do you know the In My Feeling Challenge? It's a viral deal where you post a video of yourself dancing to the song In My Feelings by Drake. And a lot of people have been doing the dance while jumping out of moving cars. This is a new take on that. This is from a gentleman in Florida, of course, who took the... <laughs> car part of the challenge to an unprecedented level. We have kind of become the armpit of the country. Yeah, we've come we've become the center of stupid. <laughs> it's yeah. really sad. There's just low expectations, low expectations. So then Jimmy Kimmel plays the video of the accident, if that's what you want to call it. And well, you'll hear his audience's reaction in the last clip. Go ahead and play it, please, Glenn. Are you riding Now, I know, I know, but um, believe it or not, he's fine, physically at least. His name is Jalen Norwood, and we tracked him down today. And that is Jalen joining us on our, our big Cisco screen from Boynton Beach. Is he? From Boynton Beach. Is he? How you doing, Jalen? I'm pretty good, man. Living life. Living. <laughs> you seem like you're okay physically, yes? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Is this how you planned it to happen? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> what was the plan exactly? <sighs> okay. We wanted to make a simple video. The plan was he was supposed to come slow <laughs> towards me, and I was going to jump on the hood and continue dancing. I see. <laughs> okay, he came, he came fast. <laughs> and... You know, he, he's driving, so he can't hear me say stop. So, so I try to get out of the way, and my slipper flips on the oil. And who's, who was driving the car? <sighs> my best friend. Your best friend, okay. And who was the kid laughing in the, uh, in the car? That is the seat of Chucky, my little brother. Oh, that was your little brother. The seat of Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> Did it bother you that <laughs> your brother's reaction <laughs> to you being hit by a car was to laugh? That that made me madder than anything. I didn't really? even care about the car anymore. The fact that you can laugh at your brother. He didn't even know if I was alive or not. He yeah. <laughs> the car let's look at the video again here. Huh? We're gonna and we're gonna slow it down. So you get out of the car, your car's not moving. Um, unlike a lot of the videos, and then, and then you slip. And wow, you I mean you really could have? You risked your life for a meme. You realize that, right? It was worth it. It was Trust worth me. it. It was worth it. Why was it worth it? Are people recognizing you now? 
Oh, I'm the most famous guy in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> really? So, and what do they say? Hey, there's the idiot who got hit by the car. <laughs> well, of course, that comes with the territory, but that's not the point. The point <laughs> is, you recognize me. And you're feeling okay? You really didn't get hurt at all by this, huh? I played basketball the next day. I'm fine. You did? Oh, all right. <laughs> well, I hope you learned a valuable lesson. What lesson did you learn from this, Jalen? Wear tennis shoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good lesson, yeah. Don't do it again, though, all right? <laughs> All right. All right. That's Jalen Norwood from Boynton Beach, Florida, <laughs> naturally, as you might imagine. Well, um, the only thing that would have made that better is if he had been naked and that it would have been a true Florida man going viral. Do you know Jalen, by the way, is he your neighbor or no, relative? I've never seen him around on the street. You know, I, I, I'm going to keep my eye out for the next idiot trying to do this challenge. <laughs> See if it's him I'm trying to make a do over. But yeah, when I heard he was from Boynton Beach, I'm like, yep, sounds about right. <laughs> It's either that or West Palm. Oh, man. So just a reminder, guys. Yeah, I will be will be including the video in the show notes. It is. It's really that good. <laughs> just get <laughs> smacked by the car. Oh, my gosh. Well, anyways, thanks for coming along with us once again as we are finding Florida. There's so much to do in all the small towns across our state. And you just got a sneak peek into our fun adventure episode, checking out some of that stuff that we did coast to coast. And that will all be coming out in the next couple of weeks. That's right. We headed out to Melbourne on the East Coast to get started, making our way through St. Cloud, Davenport, Lakeland, and ending up in Gibsonton. So all of that will be in our next couple of episodes, 11B and C, and they'll be out in the next couple of weeks. So for our next adventure, we're diving deep into Florida's travel and tourism industry by heading to a conference from one of the tourism giants in Florida, the FRLA, Florida's Restaurant and Lodging Association. For some reason, they were crazy enough to give us press passes. Uh, I hope they don't <laughs> figure things out and learn their lesson for the next year. But <laughs> tell us a little bit about what we're going to be doing there. So this is an interesting uh, organization because it is the Florida Restaurant Lodging Association, which all the restaurants and hotels in the state belong yeah. to this. They have 8,000 members. There's that many in the state of Florida. So it's a big conference. It's one of the biggest conferences in the state. And it's everything from food to, you know, people who sell the hotel sheets uh, yeah. to pillowcases to whatever. And it's going to be our first time there. So I am sure we're going to find some characters like we always do. Always. And we're going to bring them to you yeah. in our next uh, round of shows. And I can't wait to see what kind of new things there are on the horizon for Florida's <laughs> travel and tourism. Things and it's also part yeah. of a healthy food expo. And I can't wait to eat my way through that part. So <laughs> I'm sure you're going to love it. <laughs> Well, anyways, to watch us go through all of that, find us on social media. Uh, just head to FindingFloridaPodcast.com for all the links or search for Find FL Podcast. Check out our photos and videos, like, share, and leave us comments. And remember to join our group of Florida Podcast Network enthusiasts on Facebook by looking up FPN Insiders. Well, Jimmy, I wish you a hurricane-free, very happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> And I'm going to raise my glass to you and say, here's to your next adventure. Well, my next adventure includes you. So hopefully you buy me something with <laughs> in that glass the next time I see you. And that'll really be an adventure. <laughs> Sushi and sake. There Here we go. Sounds like a plan. I'm holding you to it. 